Today's video is all about Ben Johnson. Not that one. Not Glenn Johnson either. The West Ham fullback and nephew of Paul Parker. Didn't know that. Former England and Manchester United and Queen's Park Rangers, funny enough. Fullback, excellent player. It's his nephew. Didn't realise that. And a player that I'm very, very excited about for non-excitable reasons. If you see, I will explain in a minute. Before I do, this video is sponsored by the OneFootball app. You can click it and download it by clicking on the link below. Download it straight to your phone. It's free. It's easy. And you can tailor it to your West Ham specifications. I'm looking at it now. West Ham linked with Manchester United fullback. Um, West Ham linked with Slavia Prague winger. Crystal Palace may beat West Ham to the signing of Ollie Watkins. Um, it's actually got quite it's a bit controversial, actually. Five most pointless Premier League transfers. They've gone a bit saucy. Um, they're talking a they're, well. One of them's West Ham. I'll leave it. Look, you can download it. I, I will leave it to you. Anyway, the link is in the description below. Right, Ben Johnson. I like him. I like him an awful lot. And I like him because. Well, obviously he's come through the academy, blah, 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 and all that stuff. But this boy has had a baptism of fire. First game, Manchester City, out of position. Second game, Manchester City, out of position. Coming up from the academy, I mean, you know, talk about being dropped in at deep end, both under Pellegrini, by the way. Um, he was playing on the left when I say out of position. He's a right back, really, but he's quite adept. He's actually reasonably two-footed, but it's not that that I want to talk about because saying that he's two-footed is, is talking about his technique. And this is not somebody that I that I like the look of because he's got some silky technique and can dribble and, and pass and all the rest of it. It's his defensive qualities. Now, don't get me wrong. That other stuff he can do. I saw him in that Hong Kong Sevens tournament or whatever it was. And... He was, the, he was West Ham's best player there. Really, really good. I thought he was one of the best players in the tournament, full stop. And he was doing... A, he was getting forward. He was shooting. He was he was, he was crossing, passing, all, all that stuff, right? Dribbling, taking the ball, um, carrying the ball forward really, really well. So I almost... I got it wrong, really, in what type of player he was. But to see him come in at the end after lockdown. So we've got the Jeremy and Gakia saga, okay? Jeremy and Gakia doesn't want to sign a new contract. Now, I'm pretty sure that Moyes would have played in Gakia from lockdown until the end of the season. Now, not only, not only would I think he would have done that, I think he would have done that even if he was leaving on a free, but obviously Ngakia said, actually, no, I, I'm not even going to play your last few games. I'm not signing the whatever, the five-game contract COVID extension or whatever it is. I'm just not playing. I think had he have done... I think Moyes would have played Ngakia all the way. So what did he do? Play Ngakia in two games and he's something like that for him. Fredericks comes in. Fredericks wasn't great. And then he brings in um, Ben Johnson at right back. Because, of course, Ben Johnson was also going to go on to play left back. And I thought, well, I thought two things. Number one, I thought he was nervous, really nervous. And one of the first things that go when you're nervous are, are the things you have to think about. I don't just mean in, in football. I mean, generally, the one, the last thing to go when you're nervous, though, is the stuff that is well-drilled and the stuff that's natural. The stuff that, whatever it is, the stuff that you really know how to do in life, you should still be able to do when you're nervous, you know? Whatever your job is, even if you're nervous, you should be able to do that. And what really impressed me was, even though he was nervous, his defending and his defensive positioning was outstanding. I mean, absolutely outstanding. Now, it actually did grow into the game. His passing got better. His, his crossing got better. He started to venture forward a little bit more. Um, but I felt his very basic um, stock skills, what his game should be based around, were actually very good. And I think you are looking at a defensive fullback there, which, which sounds ridiculous because fullback is, by all intents and purposes, a defensive position. It's a back. A back is a defender, right? Centre back, left back, right back. They're backs. <laughs> very nature, they stay back. But so many in the modern game do maraud forward, and a lot of them are very, very good at it. In many respects, um, Johnson is the complete opposite of Arthur Masuaka. And, um, and I like that. I like that an awful lot. Of course, we saw it at the end. He played left back, and I thought he was even better at left back. Not because I think he's a better left back than he is a right back, but I just thought he'd had the additional game and um, and he just looked really, 
really solid. Is he going to get forward and, and dribble on us? Well, not at the moment. That may well come in his game. But what he did do is he plugged a gap. He put a cork in it. I think it was against Marcus Rashford to start off with. And then the last game, it escapes. It escapes me. Where it, maybe it was Aston Villa. Maybe it was something like that. But basically, he was defensively sound. I think in the first game against Man United, this Diop was probably thinking, oh, this is great. This is new. Hey! I don't have to drift over there and basically be a right back for defended. I reckon Jared Bowen was thinking, oh, this is good. I don't have to go back and help this guy out all the time. I can maybe concentrate on a bit of attacking. And I think when he played left back, we would have the same. Ogbonna would have been would have been pleased. I'm sure there was some element of talking him through the game. You'd expect that he's a young player. And the same again, because you've got someone solid there. You're not going to find it an easy way to carve it in. I do wonder, had we have had someone like that there when we played Wolves, bear in mind both, you know, the attacks that were coming down from that side. Yes, I know it was Traore, but I do wonder how much of that would and could have been stopped. Actually, just somebody that's going to stand in his position, taking it, take his position and, and do it well. There's also, there was, um, there were a couple of goals that have come down Cresswell's side, got looped over and really... Um, Fredericks should have been stood in a position to head it away on the far post, on the back post. Almost immediately we saw this happen against Manchester United. And who was there? Stood in exactly the right place to head the ball clear was Ben Johnson. And I'm incredibly impressed with that because he is such a good player with a defensive mindset. And the fact that the game, the, the pre-match nerves or whatever didn't get to his defensive game shows that that's ingrained, shows that that's entrenched. And he is, what I really like as well, you're not talking about a kid here, right? You're not talking about a little skinny 14-year-old. You know, this is this is a young man. He's in a man's body. He's strong. He's fast. He's robust. He is not daunted by the challenge. To perform like he did against Rashford, when he was clearly nervous anyway, but still come out with a really quite favourable performance, says an awful lot for him. Marcus Rashford will have a lot easier games against other fullbacks than he did that day against Ben Johnson. And the, the lovely thing that I really like about this, I think it's given us a real opportunity to, to pick and choose who we get in at right back. So let's just say, for instance, so right, sorry, right back or left back, let's just say, for instance, that David Moyes only has one, only has enough money for one, either a left back or a full back. He might have a list of five or six in each position. He might be on left back. He might be down to number f number five in the list. Not his first choice, but the right back. He might be able to get his first choice. Well, clearly he's going to do that. If the best player that he's highlighted, he can get a right back. He'll do that. Can't get a left back in? Well, not the end of the world. Why? Johnson can play there. The other way around. If he can't get that right back in, but actually he can get the left back in, that's what he can afford. Not the end of the world. Why? Yeah, you know it. Ben Johnson can play now. Now, that's a hell of a, a hell of an attribute to have, and it's a hell hell of a um, hell of a benefit to West Ham to have somebody that can slot in at either, at either fullback position and do it well and competently. You know, I don't feel he has to really prove himself that much anymore. He's he's ready. He's oven ready. Let's say. Don't make me cook him. That's not cook him. Would I have him? Let's just um, quantify this before we finish up. Would I have him as our first choice fullback next season for every game? Not necessarily. I'm not saying that. But if what happens is that next season, Johnson plays 20, 25 games in both position, either position, summer start, summer sub. Oh, I am more than happy with that. Not only that, I, I, think, it's, I think it's the way to go. I think looking at the finances and all the rest of it, that's just an area we don't necessarily have to spend on. We don't have to buy two fullbacks in each position. You get what I'm saying? I think he has a really good future at West Ham. I think he's sorry. I think he wants to be. I think he wants to be here, which is huge. Which, you know, bear in mind what's happening in Gakia, yeah, that's something. That's got to count for something, right? I think now looking and now we understand he comes from a footballing family. Be getting great advice um, from his uncle who was a fantastic right back as well. He's been at West Ham a long, long time. He did an interview. Interview was really telling. Sorry, this video is meant to be about three minutes long. But uh, that's what happens. Um, he did an interview. Because obviously he's had some injuries, which I haven't really touched on in this video, which was probably a reason enough not to, not to completely build your team around the lad until we've seen a sustained period with no injuries. But 
there was an interview and it was about him playing in the first team, about him getting the, uh, um, you know, a couple of years ago, getting a chance playing against Man City under Pellegrini, how it's taken this long to basically get back into the first team. He said, well, I've actually learned something. These are Ben Johnson's words. He said, I've actually learned something. I've learned that if you wait long enough and if you're patient and if you keep working at your game, your chance will come. It's just when that chance comes, you have to grab it and you have to show the manager, I can play first team football. Um, short, no nonsense um, comments and quote, but I'll tell you what, he was absolutely bang on. And that patience, particularly in the modern game, we're probably, not just a modern game, it's just the modern everything, is it? Modern life. Everyone wants something yesterday for nothing. The fact that he has a mentality and the right mentality, which will serve him really, really well, to say, OK, well, I can be patient, I can work hard and I, I will get in there and I have enough confidence in my own ability when I do, um, I'll make it work. I do think it's, it's important. It, I do find it the complete opposite of Ngakia, who was, you know, regardless of whatever you believe, whether you think he wanted to leave anyway, whether you think he didn't see a path into the first team, whatever you think, he wasn't... I don't feel that Ngakia was, was willing to back himself at West Ham. Um, and it's, it's really as, it really is as simple as that. Ben Johnson, I feel, is. He's willing to back himself. He's willing to back his own ability. Will he feature for West Ham next season? I'm pretty damn sure he will. Should he feature for West Ham next season? Well, I think I've, I've covered that as well. Will David Moyes involve him for West Ham next season? Well, look, none of us know. I have a suspicion, though, as a slow burner. When I say a slow burner, I'll talk about Fournals here as well. Then the way that if you've already watched the Fournals video, I've, Fournals over time endeared himself. The David Moyes showed enough qualities on the training pitch that actually David Moyes in the end thought, hmm, OK, yeah, yeah, OK, I can I can work with this guy. This guy's got a good work ethic and he's not let me down when he's been on the pitch. I think that exactly the same thing is happening with Ben Johnson and David Moyes. And I think when David Moyes is trying to scribble down his list for next season of the 25 players that will they go to make up his squad 20 of which will already be at the club now five of which are possibly subject subject to change i'm pretty sure when he's scribbling down those first 20 names that ben johnson not only is in there but when he's writing that name down moisey is thinking yeah that's it actually i don't need to worry about that kid at all that basically makes his next decision very, very easy. Ben Johnson, I like him.